first look at Phyrexia. All will be one. I'm your host, Blake Rasmussen, but the person you're here to see today is one Mr. Mike Turian. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good, Blake. How about yourself? I'm I'm fantastic. We're going to learn a lot of... Well, you already know all the stuff about Phyrexia. All will be one. You're going to learn a lot. I'm going to learn some things. Right. Uh, yeah. So if you look down at the bottom, it looks like a lot. It looks daunting. We're going to, we're going to buzz through these things pretty quickly. But this is our Phyrexia All Will Be One, what we call the first look. We've called it the pre-beat in the past. Uh, but the first look is designed to give uh, mostly retailers and distributors an early look at, at the kind of stuff that they'll be ordering. But as a bonus, you get to see it too, because why not? Let's just share it with everybody. Uh, and we got some cool, creepy, creepy stuff here. So uh, let's kick things off by just talking about Phyrexia All Will Be One generally so so it's not new for x anymore it's just phyrexia so tell us a little give us a little introduction mike yeah so uh as the product architect for uh phyrexia i had the pleasure of working with our amazing amazing creative team uh as they went and said all right what does it look like now that you know i'm going to say the phyrexians are winning like big time winning right mm -hmm. we we have seen we when when phyrexia all will be one opens we see the world, you know, I mean, coming towards completion, mm -hmm. right? Which is what the Frexians have been after now, uh, you know, really for decades. And so we're looking at, you know, some of these landscapes and, and the scenery, and it's just, it's really amazing to, you know, embrace the villainy and feel like, oh, you know, the Frexians have really come to the full, the full pinnacle of, of their power. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what this this set is a celebration of. Okay, there's something that you you mentioned the villainy. I want to talk about some of the villains in a sec, but first uh, we do need to sh show off the the set logo and set symbols. Uh, so for actually all be one, that's that's what it looks like for all your web needs, and then set symbols. So top for XE all will be one set symbol, and then the bottom is the all will be one commander symbols. Yeah, and you can, you can really see the, the Phyrexian symbol just baked right into both the uh, the main set and the commander symbols, right? To just show, like, hey, this, this, this is... This is about Phyrexia. If the name didn't right. say it, the symbol <laughs> definitely brings it home. Right. Um, yeah. Okay, so so villains. Tell us about what, what are we experiencing here on Phyrexia? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, as, as the glistening oil and as the corruption... Uh, you know, from the Mirren's point of view, from uh, uh, has spread for Phyrexia. They're just like, this is Phyrexia. This is this, this is, is, just, this, this, is, is yeah. this is this is amazing. This mm -hmm. is what we've been seeking out for all for all of time. The you know we've seen over the course of uh, the past you know four sets. You know each set has a praetor. Well, it, all all the way back to Vorinclex and Kalheim, right. right? And so you see the the praetors, and now. And now Phyrexia has done so well that it's really more about like the the Praetors sort of fighting up, to, uh, fighting amongst themselves to divide up what uh, what they've conquered, okay. right? And so and so when we're talking about villainy, like the the Praetors and all all they represent sort of uh, have come to the full height of their power. Yeah, and we've also um, yeah we've got some familiar faces. That one makes me sad. It's it's you, 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 gorgeous, you, you, but it just it makes me sad. I well, I still I still play Venser in some decks. You get to you get to celebrate Venser. You remember you remember what Venser used to be. I do. And, and now when players actually see Venser Corpus Puppet, they'll 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 get to experience what Venser has become. Yeah. It, it, Com right. Complete. I, we're not we're not showing that card off today, but oh the, yeah that art just. Well, I, I mean, you remember how like Venser is an amazing card, mm -hmm. and 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 I, and I think one of the things that's always uh, so fun about showing the completed version is like, oh, what what does it look like when you take these iconic epic characters and then add the power of Phyrexia behind yeah. them too, and, and and what that means and what that lets them do. So there's no reason to be sad. You get to celebrate. Oh, and we're gonna, we're going to see we're going to see more of those kind of completed characters that we recognize a little bit later um but this this set is just chock full of horrific phyrexia this one this one's going to give me nightmares this one's i'm just going to keep saying it. this one's going to give me nightmares oh, this one's <laughs> my we're not there is there is one piece of art um that is like all teeth that we're not showing today i'll, I'll talk about it when we get to preview season that just 
oh, I, it gets me every time. Um, but you were talking about the Praetors. Um, it looks like, we've, from key art and everything, it looks like Elish Norn is kind of front and center here. Yeah, Elish Norn is, is front and center. I mean, as much as the set's a celebration of, of Phyrexia, even more so, it's, you know, glorifying Elish Norn, right? Mm -hmm. like El Elish Norn of the Praetors is, you know, uh, she sees herself as the most powerful. Mm -hmm. And in, in Phyrexia, all will be one. We, we get to see Elish Norn in all of her glory and and what it's like to, you know, as uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say, it, as all of these poor souls at her feet, um, you know, they you really get to experience the power and the, 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 the villainy of Elish Norn in full glory. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited because this is a card that we're going to be talking about and showing off today. We are, right? In so, several forms. Right, yeah, and, right. And so um, it, it, in each one, it just has this stunning art and really just does so much to capture sort of that essence of Elish Norn. Um, and, and, and we really get to see her card, which I think so many people have been waiting for mm -hmm. a new Elish Norn. So... And, and before we get to that, I did I skipped something in the rundown earlier, and oh. we do need to look at the dates, the important dates for Phyrexia All Will Be One, so people won't know when all this cool stuff is happening. So there we go. Um, so uh, we're doing the first look today, and then January 12th is the next time you'll hear from us on Phyrexia All Will Be One. That's when the Building Worlds video will go up, and when the story will begin. We're going to make a lot of uh, references to the story uh, throughout this. So if, if anything intrigues you, January 12th is the date to circle on your calendar. Uh, and the story will run through the 17th when the set debuts alongside the cinematic trailer and the beginning of previews, which then run through the 25th. Uh, we're going to do the commander decks. Uh, there's two of them. We're going to do all of those on the 18th. I say we, it's actually two uh, community outlets. We'll do the previews and the outlets and the deck lists. Uh, the complete card image gallery up on the 26th, then the pre-pre-release with Loading Ready Run on the 27th. Uh, In-store pre-release events, February 3rd. Uh, as a reminder, that's one week back from what it was um, initially. We moved that date uh, last week. Uh, and then the digital release is on February 7th, followed by the global tabletop release on the 10th with in-store launch party events. Uh, and then MagicCon Philadelphia, and Pro Tour Phyrexia all will be won. I'll be there uh, February 17th through 19th in Philadelphia. We're going to see a lot of uh, Phyrexia all will be won on display there. Uh, and then store championship events. And then down there it says bundle complete edition release. Put that in the back of your head, audience. We're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later, but that is March 3rd. Okay, let's get to the meat of it. Let's talk previews. You were hyping up Elish Norn before I diverted us to dates there for a second. So I figure let's start with Elish Norn. So Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. For four and a white, you get a legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor. She's a 4-7. She has Vigilance. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent, you control the trigger. That ability triggers an additional time. A little panharmonicon. Uh, permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanence your opponents control to trigger. All right, so tell us a little bit about what's going on here with Elish Norn. Uh, in terms of the in, in terms of the the card itself, I mean, you, you get kind of get the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you you get to be doubling your triggers, right? Which is of course, I mean, as we see the the best way to make ridiculous board states happen in, in Magic is yep. to... Uh, or to, to draw four cards off of Muldrifter. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. To, dub, to du Double is a very powerful word. It's a very powerful right? word. Right? And at the same time, you know, what, what is it without shutting down all of your opponent's fun mm -hmm. of... Their, their, your Muldrifter is drawing four cards. Theirs, <laughs> theirs is a 2-2 two -two flyer for five mana. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is, which is, <laughs> which is something. It's a, it's a thing, yeah. Right. Uh, you know, a, a, another another piece I want to highlight here is you see there on the on the type line. Uh, of course, it's uh, Elish Norn's legendary. However, uh, also a Phyrexian Praetor. Mm -hmm. um, Phyrexia has a huge, huge presence in the set. There's over a uh, hundred creatures with the uh, Phyrexian mm. uh, uh, creature type. Right. And and so once it, we wanted to show like <clears throat> what that Phyrexia has truly come to power. Yeah. Right. And by um, I introducing so many creatures with that Phyrexian uh, creature type. 
and of course the set itself is right around 260 cards you know, some of which aren't creatures yeah Right. So, uh, and, and I think the I think the number of Frexian creatures is like in the one twenties. Um, so it's a so huge. Everywhere. They are everywhere. Frexia yeah. is everywhere. Elish Norn is, uh, you know, truly their leader, mm -hmm. uh, as, as it were. And so, uh, yeah. And then of course, just a five mana four seven. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not. It's, it's not it's nothing it, to sneeze at. Right. Yeah. It, with it, vigilance. With vigilance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Elish Norn's going to come out. You're going to know she means business, mm -hmm. as as we always have. Uh, and, and and we think that, yeah, it's really. Really, Elish Norn's the full package. Yeah. Um, so this set is also full of a, a lot of references to um, the old Mirrodin sets, the old New Phyrexia sets. Uh, this is this is one of my favorite. It's part of a cycle. Um, so we, we saw these previously as zeniths, so like Blue Sun's zenith. Uh, but now we have Blue Sun's Twilight for X blue and a blue. We get a sorcery. That's Jin Taxis in that art there. Gain control of target creature with mana value X or less. If X is five or more, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about this card, this cycle. What's going on here? Yeah, so uh, as you said, uh, each sun uh, has a praetor associated with it. Mm -hmm. And these are really monuments to... Uh, <clears throat> to those praetors, right? So he, here we see Jingitaxius in the blue sun, uh, and, you know, Jingitaxius uh, lo loves to study, uh, and, and that's just sort of what the, you know, study uh, study the specimens. And so, in fact, you know, the, the blue sun here is intentionally positioned to give that feel of Jingitaxius sort of studying the sun mm -hmm. uh, as, as it travels by, the blue sun as it travels by, as it were. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of uh, the card itself, I mean, you know, one thing that uh, blue players love to do is gain control of uh, creatures, and and this gives you uh, both a a way to control your opponent's creatures, and then also uh, you can, if you've spent enough mana, you get to make a, a token copy yeah. uh, of that creature as well. So. Um, there, there's a lot of power going on here, and like you alluded to, um, each Praetor and each color has uh, its own Twilight spell. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot more, and people can speculate now on what, what they want the other, uh, the other four mm -hmm. uh, colors to do. But uh, I'll let them know they're all powerful. They're, yeah. all, they're yeah. all pretty exciting, both in, uh, you know, no matter what format you're playing. The other thing I love about this is, is the flavor text written from a Phyrexian perspective. So where once there was ignorance, Jingitaxis brought knowledge, and an age of progress dawned. I, I don't think non-Phyrexians think of Jingitaxis that way, but I, are we going to get a lot of views from the Phyrexian angle here? Well, I mean, remember, you know, I, I think it's important, the, the saying histor uh, history is written by the winners, mm -hmm. right? And, <laughs> and so uh, at, at this moment in time, Phyrexia is, is at the, like I was talking about earlier, they. They're really the winners, and so when you're making a monument, right, you get to write the inscription. Yeah. And that, that's what the Phyrexians uh, have done here. Of course, they would be writing that in Phyrexian, but uh, they, we've generously translated that back into English. <laughs> An entire set where just all the flavor text is Phyrexian. Right. Turian's going to take that back to the to <laughs> team and be like, wait a minute. Right. Um, okay, speaking of Phyrexian, uh, we have another... It's not even a callback here. This is just a straight up reprint and a pretty popular one. So let's take a look at the updated Phyrexian Obliterator. Four black mana for a creature Phyrexian Horror. It's a 5-5 five five with Trample. And whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So we, we brought this, this back. Yeah, be, uh, you know, Phyrexian Obliterator, incredi incredibly powerful card. And... I, I think it's super exciting now. I mean, we've seen mono black um, just be, you know, which mm -hmm. of course with the four black mana, you're likely playing that in, yep. a, mono, in a mono black deck, um, you know, with, with Shieldred. Uh, and, and so now you can pair Shieldred and Phyrexian Obliterator together mm -hmm. potentially. And, uh, you know, I, I'm back from the day when I would play Phyrexian Negator and I'd be sacrificing my own permanent <laughs> for a 5-5, five five, right? Yep. Uh, n n nowadays, uh, it's a little, little, little stronger on the once on the board. Right, right. Yeah. When when, when Frexian Obliterator connects uh, with <laughs> with with any with any 
<laughs> it, it's it's bad news. It's, it's bad, bad news. You, when, you when don't want to fight that in combat. It's, it yeah. might as well say it's unblockable. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Tra tra trample is almost flavor text. In right. A, <laughs> <laughs> in a way, for sure. Yeah. And so, I mean, I I think also, you know, one of the things that we love to do is we love to go back and take a look at, you know, we, uh, we did this with Liliana as well of, hey, what are some of these, you know, these magic cards from our past that, you know, we know our players love, mm -hmm. Give, br bring them back into uh, in, into our front list product and, and really give, you know, everyone the chance to experience yeah. that. I mean, we, we've all lost a Phyrexian Obliterator in the past, and so if you go and own it, you get to win with it, and if you don't, you get to, you know, take five a turn. <laughs> uh, and, and that's... That's that. <laughs> that's that. It's that. That's that. Pretty quickly, too. Right. I. I. I oh, it's when we're talking about flavor text here. I enjoy that. You know. I mean, you, you, we'll definitely see them sh see Shieldred and Frexian Obliterator now side by side mm -hmm. on the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, and so you can read that quote to your opponents yep. while you're uh, uh, attacking. Well, and <laughs> I, I think it also shows. You know, again, talking about things from the Frexian perspective, that flavor text also shows not not everything on Frexian is harmonious. There, there's there's some acrimony in there. Yeah, I mean, one of the, you know, uh, definitely the Praetors, you know, uh, they don't see it, I'll say, like, you know, when I was talking about, oh, Elish Norn is is at the top, each each Frexian Praetor sees themselves yeah. as, like, oh, yes, I'm the, I'm the one responsible for the completion of, of Phyrexia, for, for all of this glorious mm -hmm. spread, and so therefore it's time to reap my rewards, it's like, well, when they have essentially nobody left to fight, what are they going to do? They're going to fight amongst themselves. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that flavor text alludes to it. And um, there, there's lots more of that going on. Yeah. Uh, Phyrexia, all will be one, right? That's, the, the title really is So you it. said all will be one, which means I, I think we're going to get some completed folks who used to be heroes on Mirrodin, you're right? Like, you're like a prophet, Blake. A prophet. I am. It's like I have a script here that lets me know what's coming next. Uh, here, here's, here's one of them. Sad little slow bad iron goblin. Legendary creature Phyrexian goblin artificer. So we la last saw a non-completed slow bad in Darksteel, I believe. Uh, so this one costs two and a red for the creature type I just read. 3-3, three, three, tap, sacrifice, an artifact, add an amount of red equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value, spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. So, it, we're, are we getting a lot of completed heroes here? Yeah, they're definitely, I mean, you know, one of the, the best ways to show, um, you know, the, the spread of Phyrexia is to bring back some ca characters, right? We saw, Ven uh, Fencer. Fencer earlier, yep. now, and now slow bat as well. Um, it's going to be, I'll, I'll say, a strong trend <laughs> of of bringing back you know classic Mirin heroes, mm -hmm. right, and, and showing how uh, Frexia has really spread and changed them, and, and in a lot of ways, you know, at least from the Frexians' perspective, improve them, right? I mean, yeah. here. Uh, you know, so bad got buff. Right, like, he got buff. I right? mean, yeah, yeah. No, no longer granting indestructible, and instead he's sacrificing artifacts uh, and, and, and forging them into mana, uh, so you can you can cast more more amazing uh, artifacts. Yep. Right, and, and and one of the things that's always to me so fun about uh, these cards is. You know, I mean, ma magic is so open ended to like, it's like immediately I wanted to go and look for, oh, wh what are some ghost to graveyard triggers, mm -hmm. right? That I can, you know, double dip essentially of yeah. get getting the mana here, getting. Uh, Throw a little Icker right. Wellspring in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex ex exactly, right? And, and seeing what that what that can power up, right? And it's a pre it's a good body, too. Like, I mean, a 3-3 th three, 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 for 3, yeah. right? Uh, old like I said, Slovak got swole. Yeah, he was right. a 1-2 yeah. He, two he was a 1-2, yeah. yeah. He, got, he got plus 2, plus 1, yeah. yeah. So he's, uh, you know, so the Phyrexian really um, instills a lot of, I'll say, goodness in uh, <laughs> many of these characters. Okay, but, uh, okay, <laughs> give some people at home some hope. Is, is there still a resistance? Yeah, ab absolutely, there's uh, still a resistance. You know, all... All is not lost. Um, you know, I, I, I know that while, while uh, there's a hundred plus uh, Frexian cards, you know, the, there's a, a, 
there's a few rebels that remain. Uh, th there's definitely an undercurrent of, look, there's hope, yeah. right? And, and I think that's always um, so key. So yes, while the vast majority of uh, Frexia all will be one is the Frexian piece. Mm -hmm. There is still that um, sliver of of hope. Not talking about slivers, <laughs> <laughs> not slivers, not, not slivers. No, uh, but uh, yeah, there, there there's a, a bit of hope, perhaps. Okay, <laughs> and so reason. let's let's <laughs> let's revisit two characters who give us some of that hope. So first up, uh, Jor Kadeen, the first Gold Warden. Still, still going strong. Human rebel here. Red and a white for a legendary creature. Human rebel. 2-2 two, two with Trample. Whenever Jorkadeen first Gold Warden attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then if Jorkadeen's power is four or greater, draw a card. So human rebel. So the rebel type's coming back? Yeah, yeah. The rebel type is coming back, and I, I believe the uh, the set has four rebels. You know, so it's not like, uh, for those who remember Mercadian Masks many, many years ago, yes. there's no... There's no for us old people. Yeah, for yeah. Us, yeah I suppose. <laughs> uh, there, there's, it's not about the. There's no fetching or this or that, but just mm -hmm. you know, I mean, flavor-wise, it, it really shows the resistance, right? Mm -hmm. The word rebel, uh, and, and so we wanted to show. Yep, there, there's still, there's still hope, right? And and Jor Kadeen really is is one of the cards that represents, uh, represents that hope. And a, and a pretty nice card too. A, yeah. a, a two two that benefits from equipment, you know, uh, which of course Mirrodin is famous Mirrodin for. Mirrodin is famous for equipment, right? Yep. Where it's, it's the set that introduced uh, equipment, in fact. And so um, we're continuing with uh, a bit of that with, uh, in all will be one as well. Okay. All right. So I've seen chat asking about the fate of this individual numerous times. So we're going to move into the Planeswalker section and talk about that Rebellion a little bit more because we have not seen our boy Koth in quite some time. Yeah, Scars of Mirrodin. Scars of Mirrodin. So yeah. how's Koth doing? Fire of Resistance. Seems, seems to still, still be going strong. <laughs> legendary creature, or legendary Planeswalker, Koth, starts with four loyalty, plus two, search your library for a basic mountain card, reveal it. Put it into your hand and then shuffle. Minus three. Koth, Fire of Resistance, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. So we're still doing that mountain thing. Minus seven. You get an emblem with whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, this emblem deals four damage to any target. That is that is quite the ultimate there. So Koth. Koth's okay. Yeah, Koth, yeah, Koth is uh, he's, he's doing good. I mean, he's not happy about the... I'll say the the confluence of events, <laughs> right? Right. Although he is, uh, we're we're happy to bring him uh, bring him back. But yeah, Koth, Koth is uh, is is doing good, and and as you can see here, uh, as you mentioned, very mountain uh, excited about mountains still. Yeah. Right. I mean, Koth, uh, you know, bef before he was animating mountains and sending them over. Now, it's, once you have that emblem out, you're just every mountain. Is uh, four damage, so yeah, juiced up little Valakut there. Yeah, right. Yeah. You have Valakut and Koth going, and that's <laughs> no, the that game won't be that game won't last much longer. Um, uh, players are or fans are pointing out that this is a rare card. Planeswalkers are usually mythic. Yeah, and so I mean, one of the things will be, uh, you know, while Koth is the Planeswalker we're showing off today, one of the things that's awesome about Phyrexia All will be one is. And that's ten planeswalkers in the set. Ten planeswalkers. All right, yep. we're gonna we're gonna set this up here because there's a thing going on. There are ten planeswalkers in the set because the planeswalkers they have a plan. They have a plan. It may or may not go well, but here's the thing. We're gonna show you who the ten planeswalkers are today, and we're gonna give you this tidbit. Five of them will not walk away uncompleted. Five of these planeswalkers over the course of this story are going to be completed. So let's show the 10 Planeswalkers. Uh, these are not their art for this set. Let's be very clear about that, except for Koth up there. Uh, this is their most recent uh, set printing art. Each of these characters is going to be involved in this story. Five of them will be completed. Uh, Koth, Koth's safe. Koth's yeah, good. Right. 
So now the odds are a little bit worse for the other, yeah. the other nine. Yeah, now it's right. five out of the other nine. Right, it, it, went, it went from 50-50 to four out of, uh, uh, to five out of nine. Yes. Right, uh, so yeah, so right, we're, you know, one, one of the things that's awesome is, you know, not since War of the Spark has uh, said had this many mm -hmm. planeswalkers in it, and, and this was a really great chance to, to bring in uh, 10 planeswalkers um, half are going to be rare, half are going to be mythic, mm -hmm. right? To that, uh, to the other point you were talking about about his rarity. So with, with ten planeswalkers, we really wanted to to show off um, how awesome how awesome they were to bring five of them to completion. Yep. Right. We're all still sad about a Johnny, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, you know, but and uh, Tommyo. Yep. And Tom. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it happens. It, ha it's all, it's <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> it didn't until recently. Mike. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's a fair point, I suppose. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it, it's great to show off uh, Planeswalkers bring bring their the power of the cards and bring some awesome new designs. I mean, Planeswalkers are always. Uh, incredibly, incredibly powerful yep. uh, and exciting. So um, what we're about to show you, I'm also going to caveat this, um, because one of the cool things that you all did for this set was create some manga-inspired art um, for each of the 10 Planeswalkers, and in each piece of art, they are completed. Now, we're calling these what if. Well, half of them are what if, half of them are actual. Um, so it will show the Planeswalkers completed, but that doesn't mean that's where they end up in the story. These are the yeah. sort of, uh, the five that are, uh, what if are sort of the alternate universe, what if they were completed sort of deal. Yeah, exactly. The art, the art style is, it's not giving away if these are completed yep. or not completed, right? Because we essentially have, sh have, through the art and through some of the booster fun variants, shown a completed version, yeah. regardless of if the Planeswalker was completed. Yep. So, yeah. So let's, let's take a look at those. So that's, what if Jace was completed? Yeah, yeah, J Jace, uh, I, I enjoyed making the original Jace in World Wake and uh, I'm, I'm excited for the Phyrexia all be one version, mm -hmm. right? All right, next up we have Kaito. What if Kaito were completed? Yeah, so uh, the fun thing about Kaito uh, and, and also the Wanderer is both the uh, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty and the Phyrexia All Will Be One. You can play them in the same mm -hmm. st uh, standard environment, and so um, that'll that'll give players a good good options. Yep, and and notice that on the on the right, we're just using the Planeswalkers uh, like name, not their full name, because we don't want we don't want to give away the card name. We don't want to give anything away. Um, some of these are like they say completed in the card name, so we didn't do that. So it just says Kaido. Yeah. All right, next up, it's Kaya. A, it's an early look. It's an it's early an look. Er, it's a first look, even. The first look. Yeah. Oh, first, the first look, yes. Yeah, yeah, you got to repeat things. <laughs> uh, after Kaya, so again, here, not completed. We just showed him not completed. Koth. This is if Koth had been completed. Yeah, and, and this, this here is, uh, right, when we're talking about that what if, Right, um, so there's this borderless, uh, the borderless manga style, mm -hmm. and it just, you know, I mean, it gives a, a, a beautiful vis visualization of, oh, had Koth been completed, what what would that look like? Yeah. Uh, next up is Luca. And after Luca, we have Nahiri. Still angry, still has a sword. Yeah, still, still pointing the sword menacingly. Yeah. menacingly. yeah. Just, but like she might complete you with her sword. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Nissa. Oh. Yeah, sort of that I iconic Nissa pose. Yep. Right, but, but now uh, for the Phyrexians, potentially. Yep. And then Tyvar. Perhaps, perhaps for Phyrexian elves, if that, uh, perhaps if that's a thing. Creature type Phyrexian <laughs> elves. Uh, Vraska. Vraska uh, looks a little at home there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And finally, the Wanderer. All right. 
So uh, this is a great spot for us to talk about booster fun generally um, because we have some pretty cool things going on in this set. Let's start with the basic lands. So we're going to show off all versions of the basic lands today. Yeah. Um, so let's start with um, the first set of basic lands here and tell us about these. Okay, so a, a couple of things are going on. One, uh, you know, we wanted to show off the landscapes of Phyrexia and what the, you know, you, you can sort of get the, the hints of, you know, back when we were showing off new Phyrexia and, and how, how that's continued here. Uh, and then in terms of where you can find uh, these five basics, mm -hmm. um, they're in the bundle, uh, in the commander decks, and in the, the set jumpstart product. So, okay. um, and also the bundle and set jumpstart uh, have foil versions of these uh, lands. Yeah, of, of these lands as well. Um, and so I'll, these are just, it, it's a great way, you know, basics are always such a way to show off the world, the setting, mm -hmm. and uh, we use that as an opportunity here to do so. Yeah. Uh, and for an even uh, wider view, one would say a panorama view of the setting. Uh, we have these panorama full art basics with art by a friend of the show, Elena Danner. Yes, so yeah, the uh, the panorama full art basics, or as I would often call them, the Dannerlands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, you, you can really, uh, you, you see here uh, the Phyrexian symbol in each uh, in each one of uh, the pieces of art, and then they are uh, when you put them in this order, they they show off the, the a panoramic landscape. So re really fantastic, um, and I, I think to me just uh, you know representative of the set and the setting in a uh, in their own right, right? Just mm -hmm. showing off that Frexian uh, symbol symbol within each. Personally, my favorite. Is the mountain you just see like the mountain and how it mm -hmm. uh, creates the Frexian symbol? So, um, and these uh, these lands you can find in draft set and collector boosters, okay, uh, in both foil and non. All right, uh, and then a third set of basic lands, the Phyrexianized basics. What is going on here? Yeah, so these these are um, if you if you're familiar with um, Kaldheim and what. Uh, Mark Riddick did there. Mm -hmm. We we invited him back to take a look at uh, to take a look at hey what what does the mana symbol you know the, our classic mana symbols combined with this Frexian essence you know what what does that look like and and even in the frame itself you can see um, how we took plains island swamp mountain and forest and we. Uh, showed them off in the in the Phyrexian language. Yeah. So, um, you know, w which we felt good about doing because it's pretty clear about which which of these yes. uh, <laughs> these uh, it's, these it's more, is which more for our Phyrexian scholars out there. Right. Yes. What you know, if when you're when you're building your deck and you really want to uh, embrace the villainy, uh, I think these are uh, awesome lands to choose and do so. Uh, and much like the full art panorama lands, the Phyrexianized basics are found in draft set in collector boosters and foil and non. So, um, and, and those two lands are the only uh, basics that you'll find in draft set and collector boosters. Okay. So, all right, su next super up, sweet. Yeah, super sweet. Um, okay, so next up we have our first um, non-basic land booster fun style. Uh, the extended art. So these, this is, we do this for any every collector booster that we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Blue Sun's Twilight um, is, is one of the extended art rares that you're, you'll find in uh, collector boosters. And, you know, it, it just, our, the artwork of Magic is so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And um, being able to show it in that extended uh, frame is just, you know, a way to really, you know, uh, it, it, it adds a touch of flair and you just get to enjoy it that much more Phyrexia. Yep. Um, speaking of that much more Phyrexia, they're getting Icker all over the place. Check out that that transition. So borderless Icker showcase cards. Tell us about these. Yeah, so uh, one of the uh, the showcase style we really wanted to lean into is uh, what we're calling the the Icker showcase cards, right? So here we're taking a look at Elish Norn, Phyrexian Obliterator, and Slowbad. Um, it's one of many cards uh, that we have taken and brought into this um, the Icar 
style, right? So while the card itself is in this black and the art style itself is in this black and white, mm -hmm. you know, it uh, <clears throat> it, it gives this it gives these paint splash feel, uh, as it were. The cards, you know, we wanted to make sure they had a nice color to them, so that way. Um, it's, it's their color identity itself is clear, mm -hmm. but show off just sort of, uh, you know, you were talking about the perspective of, oh, what if the Phyrexians, you know, are writing the flavor text? Like to mm -hmm. me, this uh, really kind of embodies, oh, what would Phyrexians do if they were uh, in charge of art direction for magic? <laughs> and uh, it, it really celebrates that in this, you know, glorious style. Now, are these, uh, is this style particular to Phyrexian creatures, or, or how is this applied? Yeah, I mean, we went and we hand-selected, uh, I believe it's 67 cards across rarities. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's very Phyrexian uh, in that selection, right? We, we sort of want to, like, celebrating the glory of Phyrexia. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's uh, a fair number of them across rarities, and... Uh, yeah, and these are also found. You can find these in draft set collector boosters, right? So, um, yeah, they're they're everywhere. They're awesome, uh, and they just you know, I mean, to me, they they show off the embodiment of what we're trying to do with Frexia. All will be one so well. Yeah. Um, all right. So we showed off the art for some of these earlier, but the borderless manga cards. Um, you'll uh, so what's we we've seen. Koth, tell us what's going on with Elish Norn and Jorgatine Kadeen here. Well, uh, so uh, first I want to highlight with Elish Norn, uh, if you check out the artist credit there, Jun Junji Ito, yep. uh, who uh, did a secret layer for us, um, also was excited and wanted to do Elish Norn, mm -hmm. and so um, we brought the borderless manga um, style and Junji Ito together, right? And uh, it just came out with such a fantastic, uh, a fantastic piece of art yep. that I know the, the fans of, you know, his, his manga uh, and his horror style, just, it really amplifies that. So super excited there. And then with uh, Jor Kadeen, um, much like with Koth, and we were doing, oh, what does it look like if um, Koth was Phyrexianized? Um, Jorkadine's in that we went and we took a handful of Mirren heroes mm -hmm. and we said, okay, let's, what if uh, they've been Phyrexianized, yeah. right? Okay, and, and, and married that with the borderless, uh, borderless manga style. Okay, so, so, so there's some, some rebel heroes who also get the what if treatment alongside some planeswalkers. Yes, that's, that's right, yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, re really awesome to see um, that, that style. Uh, and it's not just for Frexians, right? The Fre they they want to share. They want to share. share. They want to yeah. share. They want to share They're the love. All about sharing. Frexians are the most yeah. most sharing peoples in the multiverse. Right. Just, uh, just hey, all about. Here's some, here's some glistening oil for you. <laughs> it's a it's a nice present. You know, the holidays are coming up. It's a nice just present. Just get someone some oil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so you know while we're talking about Elish Norn, this is the this Elish Norn is sort of the I guess we'll call it the conclusion of a super cycle, where we've had we've been seeding these praetors throughout sets leading up to this. Yeah, that, that's a, right. I mean, uh, you know, Warren Kleck starting uh, in Kaldheim, yep. right? We w we wanted to give a taste of uh, what was to come, right? B yep. Building up to this uh, to this moment, and then to. Uh, March of the Machine, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, as that we've been, oh, here's Jingataxius, right? Here's Urbrask. Yep. Um, and, and, and now we've uh, finished the five card cycle with Elish Norn. Yeah. Right. Which actually leads to our next Booster Fun cycle. So, these are pretty cool. So, uh, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, the original concept art for the Praetors? Yeah, yeah. Uh, R Richard Witters. Um, you know, as the as the idea of praetors were being concepted, right? For mm -hmm. every for every set, we make these amazing uh, style guides that we use with the artists, so they know. Oh, what does a Phyrexian look like? Yeah. Okay, here's here's references. Oh, what what do the you know, would what, what, what does Vorinclex look wait, like? What does yeah. Vorinclex look like? What is what is Phyrexian jewelry look like if if there is such mm -hmm. a thing, right? Um, and so um, Richard Witters went and. Um, made concept art for each of the five praetors um, as the Frexian praetors were being developed. 
And we went back and, so in the forefront, you can see um, his concept art, and then um, there's a, a bit of graphic design work uh, behind it to sort of highlight, uh, highlight their awesomeness. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, these are the five um, sort of, I mean, really the original, like, you know, be before Ellis Norn was released uh, the first time, mm -hmm. right? This is uh, w what she looked like in uh, our concept illustrators' uh, minds. So, mm -hmm. yeah, highlighting that. Um, there is, so we, I, I also, there's, there's a special foil we're going to talk about. I have some actual physical cards right here I'm going to show in a sec. Um, before we do that, there's there's one more Elish Norn, because how could we not do this? We did this for the other Praetors, uh, but there's a Phyrexian, uh, Phyrexian language Elish Norn as well. Yes, so here, here it is, right? So we're, uh, we, we took the the art that we that we showed off earlier, you know, that you can, uh, if you're so inclined, read in English. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we brought uh, the Frexian language, the Frexian frame uh, that we've done here a, a number of times. Uh, and and so Ellis Norn is in Frexian. Uh, I, I, it's just, you know, for the, for the Frexian fan, the Frexian super fan, like to me, this is just an amazing expression of you know, it, it, it's so glorious in some ways. I, I think that the, the Frexian frame even highlights the, the awesome art mm -hmm. even more of just like, yep. you know, it really just lets you celebrate that in all, in all ways. Um, and so, and I also really enjoy the power toughness, uh, just being in the, the Frexian font. Uh, yep. So it's, uh, it's pretty striking. All right. Um, next, there's a, there's a special foil uh, process for this set, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So there's the step and complete foils, mm -hmm. uh, which I know you're excitedly holding. I'm, in I'm here. like, I'm like, yeah, I want to show it, but right. talk about it a little bit first. <laughs> <laughs> it's place in the set, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So with step and complete, uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to uh, to to capture the resonance of of what uh, the Frexians are about and yep. what our sets are about, and and to me, with uh, here, we sort of said, "Oh, what if you know? What if the Frexians, you know, wanted to be stylish and like how how would they design foils and what would what how would they you know Frexians brand themselves as it were mm -hmm. right like as a as a fashion house or and so this treatment we um, it's a foil treatment and it just it, it's super stunning the. Uh, the Frexians and the Frexian symbol goes all out with this, yep. uh, the step and complete treatment. So let's, so let's let's see if we can show these on camera here. Let's see how, okay, yep, you can get a pretty good, right. yeah, so, so when the, uh, as the light catches and as you're moving it, you can Those see Those are all the, little Frexian yeah, symbols yeah, there. Yeah, all, all the Frexian symbols there on the, on Junji Ito's amazing uh, artwork and capture of Elish Norn. And so, let's do a, let's do a Frexian obliterator too. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sound effects back here? Right. So here, so here we've captured. You know, there's um, all of the. I, I think earlier I misspoke when I talked about um, sixty plus uh, <coughs> sixty Icker. plus Icker, Icker cards. Okay. I, I, the, the number is actually in the forties. What I was thinking of uh, there was there's sixty plus of these. Uh, step and complete cards, right? Okay. And so you can see there a couple. We did, we're doing them in the borderless manga style, mm -hmm. uh, in the Iker showcase style, right? And then the step and completes adding adding on to that, and, and and more of the booster fun also is having the the step and complete. So uh, it, it's really fantastic. Um, when the light catches them, it's just so so joyful, yep. right? You, you know, so so gleeful in terms mm -hmm. of embracing the villainy. Uh, uh, yeah, it's. They're they're really stunning to hold in person. They are. I was I was very excited. Yeah. The, the the foiling feels cool too. Yeah, yeah. They 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 really do have a great feel, a great look, uh, and so uh, and, and those can the step and complete. You can only find those in uh, the collector boosters uh, for Frexia All Will Be One. So okay. they're yeah. So something to go out and get. Um, speaking of boosters, let's so to, to look at the various booster funds we have. As people in chat have pointed out, there are a bunch of versions of Elish Norn. This is Elish Norn's set. Yeah. This is this is her world. 
This is, uh, you know, she's the last Praetor to show up. So yeah, Elish, Elish Norn gets the spotlight in a number of different ways. Let's see the various versions of Elish Norn here. And real quick, can you, um, just for each of the booster uh, fun types, can you run through where and what boosters they uh, appear in? Yeah, so uh, when we're talking about main set, that's typically referring to draft uh, and set boosters. Uh, and then where it, Elish Norn's found, the, the main set versions there is found in foil and non. Uh, and then in, in the collector booster that Elish Norn can be found in uh, the tr traditional foil. Uh, for the borderless Ichor showcase cards, uh, th you can find those in draft set and collector boosters. Uh, and so, uh, in fact, in the collector boosters, you're, uh, you're, you're guaranteed some of the lower rarity ones which are bordered. Um, for the borderless manga, you, once again, draft set and collector boosters. Uh, in foil and in non-foil, uh, borderless concept praetors, draft set and collector boosters, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and then the Phyrexian language, once again, draft set and collector boosters. So, um, you know, we, we really wanted to, no matter which, which, which uh, magic product uh, is your favorite, we wanted to give you a chance to open up uh, some of these sweet, sweet treatments. Uh, and so they're, they're really across basically draft set and collector boosters entirely. Cool. Um, all right, so next on the ticker down there, the ticker tells me we're moving to Universes Within. Uh, we haven't really used that uh, phrase publicly a ton, but I know some fans have used it. So these are the um, in-magic versions of Universes Beyond cards. So in this case, we've, we did this before with the, the Stranger Things cards that made into Streets of New Capenna's uh, the list. So this Universes Within um, shows up from the um, Street Fighter cards. Yeah, the, yeah. The, these universes we uh, within they're found in going to be found in all would be one set boosters. Okay. Um, and yeah, they're they're the Street Fighter cards that were released uh, a, a bit ago, and I think uh, and we bring them to Magic Creative versions, right? Yeah. So what we're looking at here, uh, mechanically, these cards are the same, right? So this was. Uh, e Honda mm -hmm. uh, in the Street Fighter Secret Lair, uh, but we're bringing them into the Magic Creative, right? Making that so uh, if you missed out on purchasing the the Street Fighter Secret Lair, you have another opportunity to get them and to mm -hmm. play with them. Um, the rules text wise, they're identical. Yep, um, and they're uh, small in the bottom there, right above the the artist credit, the Zoltan Boris. Artist credit, you can see which secret layer um, they they align with. So yeah. if you, if you happen to mix and match them, you can only have a maximum of four uh, Baldins and E Hondas in in a given deck. Yep. Right. You know, if you're playing in any sort of, I'll say, uh, organized format. Yes. Right. A a anything goes. You know, you can block. You can uh, do whatever you, you want. You yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Yeah. You do you. Uh, all right, so then right. we got... Uh, yeah, so this was Ryu. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, and so once again, we're, we're bringing Ryu into uh, the Magic Creative uh, with Vikia. And, you know, uh, much like we did um, the previous times we've done Universes Within, um, you can only find these in the set boosters. And we've actually, uh, they'll be found in the spot that you typically get the list. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, these are going to show up, I think you get these about one in every 24 set boosters or so. Okay. Uh, which is slightly different than we've done, uh, than we did in the past. We, we definitely took a look uh, and, and wanted to make sure that these were showing up at the right amount. So, um, and here is uh, Asia of Sparks and Smoke, um, which was Ken mm -hmm. in the, the Street Fighter drop. Um, and so, you know what, I mean, they're, they're fabulous. They're fabulous magic cards. I know uh, our fans of Street Fighter who, who got them really enjoyed them. And uh, I was excited that they got to be included in uh, Phyrexia All Will Be One Packs. Yep. Uh, this, this was uh, Blanca. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, this, this, is my, this is my kind of magic card, right? It's just like you get, <laughs> you get Trample. You, of course, you're likely going to... Uh, be pumping it up, yep. right? And you know you, you can hit them for a lot of damage, uh, especially with haste too. I mean, it's 
Yeah. Uh, five, five for five with haste. You, Human beast warrior. Just, just nonsense there. Yeah. All right. Next up. Right. Uh, this was uh, Guile in the uh, Street Fighter drop. My favorite character from Street Fighter. Who was your favorite character from Street Fighter, Blake? Do you? Uh, I was always a uh, Chun Li. Chun Li. Okay. Yeah. Because well, I wasn't. I wasn't very good. All I, all I could do was spam the kicks. Yeah. yeah it was pretty bad. Uh, yeah. My, my my favorite was Guile, and uh, so he, he, here we see Guile brought to uh, the magic universe with the universes within. Uh, Zangief, uh, and, you know, uh, I mean, w one of the things I, I love about magic is just like the rise of, of Commander. It's really, uh, it, it's really been awesome for just, you know, the different ways. Like w when I was playing magic, of course, you know, I, I was huge into draft um, and, and con constructed play. And now, with Commander having all these be legendary creatures, it's it's great that yep we can get them. All right, let's do these last couple here. Yep, yep. Here, here, here. Uh, yes. Dalsum. Yep. Uh, and you know, taking a look, and I think last but not least is is your favorite, right? I think Chun Li's mm -hmm. there's yeah. yeah there's now known as Zethi Arcane Blade Master. Yeah, still with multi kicker. Still with multi kicker. Still yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a, a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad we're bringing them into the Magic Universe. Yeah. All right. Now let's uh, talk quickly about the products for Phyrexia All Will Be One. We can put those all up on the screen there. Uh, you'll notice that, uh, again, that Bundle Complete Edition, we're going to talk about that. that next. You can see it on the bottom there. It's the next topic. Uh, there will be two commander decks. One will be called Rebellion Rising. It will be white-red. And then the other one will be called Corrupting Influence. It will be white, black, and green. Yeah, and so uh, the dates that you showed, we showed uh, a, a bit ago, that, that's when the commander cards uh, themselves are going to be shown off. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we talked about sort of the, the hope of... Uh, if there is any hope for the non Phyrexians, and uh, this com the, the commander decks have, uh, you know, with corrupting influence versus mm -hmm. rebellion rising, you can see how where how that those the two sides clash. Yeah, yeah, yep. e exactly. All right, so let's talk about that complete edition. First of all, what is it? What is the bundle complete edition? So the bundle complete edition, uh, it's going to come out a few weeks after uh, after the main set. Uh, and really, once again, we went and we're like, look, there, there's a lot of Phyrexia here. There's a lot of uh, celebrating Phyrexia. Like, can we do more? Is there a way to show off, like, what does a Phyrexian bundle look like? Mm -hmm. uh, and so Bundle Complete Edition um, is, is our way to do that. And we introduced a new exclusive treatment uh, and some cards that are going to be featured in the, the, the complete edition as well. They're, I mean, as amazing as everything we've shown is, they are uh, equally amazing. Uh, and so for the, for the Phyrexian uh, fans out there, mm -hmm. you know, this, this is really just uh, a super exciting product. And I want to clarify something you said. You said an exclusive treatment and cards, but the cards are cards that are from the main set. They just have the exclusive yeah, treatment, th correct? Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly right. The, um, the cards, and, and we'll take a look at them uh, here. They are the treatment itself is the exclusive. Uh, it's an exclusive foil treatment that the complete edition is the place to find. It. Okay. Um, the cards themselves, as will be obvious when we show some of them, mm -hmm. uh, are are available throughout Magic. Um, so first up. So yeah, we just have some of the treatments here. These yeah, are the, so, yeah. So, so these are actually basic lands. If you've heard of them, they are not. <laughs> they are not exclusive to the complete edition. They are not. Uh, and uh, each complete edition has uh, you get two uh, of each of these uh, cards. So t uh, ten total basic lands uh, with the oil slick raised foil uh, treatment. Um, and, and once again, you know the uh, the graphic shows off their shine. Uh, but holding them in person, you really get to feel mm -hmm. uh, the contrast of the treatment. And once again, they have a great feel to them uh, yeah. uh, as well. So as exciting as they, these look, and these are awesome, um, it's, they're, they're even more stunning 
uh, in person for sure. And we're only going to show off one of the other oil slick raised foils here from the complete edition because uh, we it's the only car we've shown off. But here is a photo of Elish Norn Mother Machines in that oil slick raised foil. Yeah, and so here um, this is one of twenty um, different mythics, uh, and so we took each of the the main set mythics and we gave them an oil slick raised foil treatment. Um, the complete edition, you get two of them, uh, two of the 20 at, at random with each, in each uh, complete edition bundle. And okay. the complete edition bundle has a, a lot more, and we'll get into that yep. um, upcoming as well. But, we, you know, since we're showing off the treatments here, uh, we wanted to show off the oil slick raised foil treatment uh, as well. All right. Um, and then, um, okay, so that is... Those are all the cards and stuff we have to show off. We do have a little bit more for one at the very, very end that we'll close out with. Uh, but before we do that, I, I said at the top that this, you know, while we're happy you're here and we love showing you cool things, a lot of this is to give information to our stores and distributors. And uh, it turns out they need some information about March of the Machines too. Now, that's the set after one. It releases April 21st. We're just showing high level stuff here, no cards. Um, just some stuff so that uh, stores and distributors can do pre-order kind of things. So uh, let's just real quickly show the logo for March of the Machine. And then we've got the set symbols across the rarities. You can see the Frexians look like they're still uh, doing pretty well, huh? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that machine's marching there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, product lineup with some images. That will be useful for pre-orders. We had to, it, this, the, the packaging can get a little spoilery in places. You see that collector booster, the commander decks. We, we, we even um, removed some stuff uh, just so that you couldn't see this, the, the little story tidbits that are going to be right there. So, yeah, that's it for March of the Machines. That's it. No yeah. more. Um, yeah, so um, we're out of time, actually. But uh, Phyrexia all will be one. We kick everything off. Maybe we can put the dates graphic up there one more time. Uh, we kick off the story on January 12th. We know players love the story leading into card previews and the debut. So uh, the big date is January 17th for kicking everything off. Pre-releases begin February 3rd. And then the global tabletop release is February 10th. Um, I want to thank... Mike Turian for coming in and sharing all of his knowledge about Phyrexia All Will Be One. Uh, I want to thank you for tuning in and seeing all of the cool things that we're talking about. We'll be talking more about it in January. Uh, Weekly MTG will be back next week. Um, it's the last show before the holidays. I'm going to show off just some just some Blake's favorite things. That's we're going to do it Martha, oh. Martha Stewart style. It's, and we'll, we'll it's, have a it's, is it Blake's Q &A. favorite things of 2022? Is that no, what's no, just uh, like. Just Blake's favorite magic things. Oh, just they're all magic related. They're yeah, all magic to be related. clear, they're all magic related. Uh, but we'll hang out, we'll chat. Um, yeah, so uh, we will see you next week. And before you go, we're going to leave you with one more thing.